Uh, Chris Bouverie, our next speaker, is in his fifth year already with this company. Um, in these five years, he really like took his startup and our company through all kinds of like shifts and turns, did all kinds of common mistakes that you have to do on the way, and learned quite a lot. And that's what he wants to share with us today. So his company, Antissimo, originally started with a focus on AR and smart glasses, and uh, smart glasses apps. And now they've sort of developed in a local platform for integrated business and IoT apps. So quite a journey, and I think it'll be very interesting to hear what you learned on the way. So please, please welcome Chris Bouvelli. Thank you for the introduction and welcome everybody to a startup's journey. So the story that I'm about to tell you is how we basically transitioned from being an IT service provider with a great with a great idea to a technology provider that's actually nowadays selling in large scale to enterprise customers. So um, it was really one hell of a ride, I can tell you. Uh, founding a startup and working for it is like a roller coaster ride, right? So most of you that may be part of a startup know that. So let's see how this all started. Well. In 2012, I met my old friend Reza and Christian, who were both um, over 10 years in the area of SAP integration and dealing with enterprise software, did a lot of integration projects basically. And myself, I was dealing um, over 10 years in, uh, with AR, mobile tech, and web development. So we basically developed a vision of bringing enterprise data into the human field of view, providing enhanced free working experience using smart glasses fully integrated into backend systems like SAP or other ERP systems uh, with enterprise customers. So as we started, we extended the team. Of course, what most startups miss is you need a sales guy from the first day, I can tell you that. So we kind of extended and um, um, we took Florian on board with our CSO. And of course, another big thing is even if you try to raise money, you need an experienced CFO. So we, we uh, knew Martin and Martin joined us as well. So the journey began. Before um, I'm going to show you a short video, I want to, um, in, to invite you to do a little experiment. So the video that you're about to see might be familiar with some of you. So as soon as you recognize the video, I would uh, please beg you to raise your hand because I think that this video might, be, might have been shown today or yesterday on this conference, but it has been show, shown basically all over the world. So how it, how it started is, you can see that in that video. So please raise your hands if you, if you have seen that already. One, two. Okay, I'm just gonna let it play. Four. Welcome, it is 6.47 a.m. So basically, um, we kicked off that video in 2013 uh, together with SAP. So some of you might think that this video was actually done by, by SAP. Um, well, we did that in a partnership and this video showed basically a warehouse worker running around with a digital assistant system based on smart glasses. Back in the days, there wasn't even Google Glass on the market, so we took like a prototype of a video glass and cut it into pieces and basically tried to come up with that vision to show the world that enterprise uh, software can be fun and it can also leverage innovative technologies like augmented reality. So within that video, you see a couple of use cases starting from picking scenarios using augmented reality to highlight the storage bins you can see uh, picking and scanning uh, using the smart glass, and the whole system is uh, voice guided, so um, not even that the system is talking to the guy, but he can also uh, basically issue voice commands to, uh, to uh, do the picking process. So um, we did that uh, in a warehouse uh, not far away from the city where we found it, Würzburg uh, in Bavaria, Lower Franconia to be specific. And um, after that video, it really started with the roller coaster ride because we didn't even know what kind of buzz we were generating with that video because as I said it was a vision and we tried to show the world that augmented reality is also very beneficial in the enterprise world. So you can see in all those scenes that augmented reality is basically running through the whole video and as I said it was a concept video some of the stuff wasn't even possible at that, at that day. But um, in that video, it's not, not just the picking scenario, you can see now the uh, forklift has a malfunction uh, and the guy basically drives to uh, a maintenance area and then he calls an expert 
uh, to help him out because he has a battery problem. So that's another use case. We call that remote support. You can see that, like a live audio video, skype communication between the expert and the forklift driver. Okay. Also using augmented reality to superimpose um, guiding and, and um, how he can fix the problem. And also, we were thinking that um, gamification could be also very beneficial to the overall process. So you can see here safety warnings and all that stuff when you drive around a warehouse with a forklift. It can be kind of dangerous if you don't know where you're going or if other forklifts cross your way. So, um, and this was like an end-to-end -end process starting from picking to the delivery and it ends at the gate. And now we have the gamification feature with a new record of the fastest request that this picker did. So, as I said, this video had over 300,000 views on YouTube and we didn't even really know what we kicked off and what devil we, uh, we basically await. So, after that, we were featured in almost every newspaper uh, in Germany. We were picked up by Technology Review. We had a centerfold in the, in the Wirtschaftsgruppe. And so, it really started. So, what we did is we took the video and basically started to developing the use cases that you've seen in the video. We started with warehouse picking and remote support. So, and we were looking for all kinds of smart glasses. And that year Google Glass was announced, all those smart glasses were kind of on the market. Some of them not really or not yet, but so we evaluated all those smart glasses and we found out that they are not ready yet. So we developed the use cases, we piloted it with some customers and we came up with some nice user interface concepts, for example, on how you can interact with smart glasses based on the color scheme and based on the interactions that smart glasses offer you. So you can imagine um, using augmented reality with smart glasses and also integration into enterprise backends is kind of tough. Here are some, some examples of the applications we built based on the video. So you can see the highlighting of the storage bin. You can see the remote call um, on the um, bottom right corner and also some scanning stuff and identification by scanning the login marker. So um, we also started building augmented reality apps not just with smart glasses but also with tablets. Like for, for example a repair guide for a printer and stuff like that. The fun thing is, um, here are some more examples um, of applications we did. Also with the remote support, with some apps running on smart watches and tablets and uh, a combination of both. So the fun thing is we were coding. We were coding the whole day. Um, so we onboarded developers, we did individual programming and we basically did the same stuff over and over again. We were integrating into SAP from every application again and again and coding can be really um, time consuming and costly and it takes a, um, a lot of effort to basically deploy all those applications. So we did that basically a year from 2.12 to 2.13. And then we found out that while we were doing stuff over and over again, there should be a way to start configuring those applications without having to code them. And also kind of taking out the integration part from the application to an abstracted integration layer. Why? Because we thought that if we could come up with a tool for us that could make us better, stronger and faster in the factor 10. So our goal was to speed up our own development and to be able to be more sustainable when creating those applications. So we started thinking about how we could configure those applications. And that was basically when the idea of Simplifier was born. Uh, back in the days it wasn't called Simplifier, it was the Altissimo framework and we were just using it in-house to basically help us delivering those solutions. So um, when we look at what the Simplifier is, did you at least watch that video and you can basically get an idea of what we do now and what the simplifier is all about. Existing systems must be brought in line with modern practices. And yet, we are slowed by the complex structures and endless project terms. That shouldn't be. For you, we make it easier with the simplifier. Now you will only need to pick one solution for successful digitalization. Create business applications step by step up to 10 times faster than before. How? Use standardized interfaces and prefabricated elements. Use the created applications on the web, on smartphones or new devices like smartwatches and smart glasses. You can not only integrate data from your existing systems, but also use new information by connecting your sensors and machines. With the simplifier, your projects will not only be accomplished faster, 
but they will simultaneously achieve the requirements needed for successful implementation of new strategies and business models. Master the constantly growing challenges of digitalization. Simplify, the platform for digital transformation. So as you can see, we basically created that video because we started not just using this product for our own purposes. We thought that since we were finding out that we were 10 times faster than before, this could be very beneficial to either our corporate customers, but also other IT service companies that try to um, develop applications for their customers. So we basically positioned the platform as being a low-code platform for integrated business and IoT apps. So what does low-code mean? Low-code means you don't have to code as much as you do when doing individual programming. You can start with configuring your interfaces. You can conf configure your um, applications and user interfaces for that. And basically the applications that you create will run on all those devices and the different operating systems that are shown right here. Um, so what we did is um, there are three parts that are mainly based um, um, on integrating existing data sources from SAP, OPC UA, and all that stuff. And it's all about making complex technologies more accessible. So if you join us at our booth downstairs, you can see a HoloLens demo that we built with the simplifier. So I'm running out of time, so let me just tell you on this timeline on how we evolved. So 2012, we were founded. We had a seed round, basically, with friends, fools, and family. Um, and we started to develop the simplifier 213. We had our um, first alpha release, the first DAC customers, a beta release, and an angel round. And then we merged um, the GmbH into a, um, AG, um, and we had the first US customers. So we closed an A round to basically fund the whole thing because we were growing, so you can see the headcount on the bottom. And in 2015, we were already 57 people. Nowadays, we're 78, and we have our release uh, version 2.5, and we're active not just in the AG region, but also in the US. Um, so what we do from now on is basically keep calm, calm and keep simplifying using our own product and basically looking for partners and other companies to use that product. So I hope I could give you some insights on how we evolved and that it wasn't really easy to transition from basically developing individual apps to creating a product and stopping doing service business and focusing on product development. That's a tough cookie, I can tell you that. So each of you that has this uh, same problem um, it is really uh, hard to do, but um, it is possible. Uh, we can show that. So thanks for that, and I, could, I hope that I could give you some insights on our journey. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Chris.